How to use an apple press to make amazing apple cider. The pioneers that settled here in the 1870s planted some trees in the surrounding area which are Macintosh, Strawberry Crabapple, Transparent, and some other unknown varieties. Most of the people who have apple trees here don't want to pick them or have too many to use, so there are plenty of apples for anyone who wants them. We don't always produce enough apples for all the cider that we want, so we pick apples from several neighbors' trees year after year. When we first began to pick and use large quantities of apples, we had friends who owned an apple press. At first, we thought it would just be a lot of work for little return. But, after a season of picking free apples and making apple cider, we were sold on the idea of buying an apple press for ourselves. Fresh apple cider is much, much better than apple juice purchased in a store. We have our apple press now, and invite anyone in the area to use it. We have had many families come to our house to use our press, and continue to year after year. And, as a result of using ours, three families have also purchased their presses. There are different types of apple presses, the kind we have is a hand crank type. A hand crank grinder is typically made of steel or cast iron and consists of a collecting area, tub container, a crank, and a rotating cylinder with embedded teeth, which grinds up the apples as they are fed into the hopper. Our procedure for harvesting and pressing apples for cider is as follows. We pick three to six five-gallon buckets of ripe apples at a time and process them within two or three days. First, the press is set up with a large container underneath for the cider to drain into, which also has a strainer set on it to filter out any large pieces that may fall in. Then, the apples are washed in a bucket of water or a large tub before they are processed in the press. We don't skip this step even if the apples look pretty clean. Next, one of us puts the apples into the hopper, skin and all to grind them up, while the other person turns the grinding wheel handle. The chopped up apples drop into a mesh cloth lined tub container under the hopper, where the chunks collect until the container is full. While the tub container fills up with chopped apples, occasionally one of us pushes the pieces down to pack the container more tightly until we are ready to press it. When the tub container is full, we put the round tub ram pressing disc into the tub and press the cider by cranking down the large pressing screw on top of it. When the cider stops flowing, the pressing screw is unscrewed, the pressing disc is taken out, and the mesh liner with the remains is taken out and dumped where the chickens or steers can eat it. The container with the strainer on top that catches all of the cider is carried into the house, and then food safe liter bottles are filled with cider and frozen. When we pick the apples, ours or someone else's, we only take home apples that we have picked on the tree. We don't take any off of the ground, and if we drop one then it doesn't go home with us. This way we don't have any sanitation problems. Most of the apple trees in this area are flood irrigated so there is the chance of getting apples with E. coli or something else on them if they have been on the ground. Although, sometimes we will take home apples off of the ground and feed them to our animals, we keep them separate from the apples that we eat. When our son was very young we pressure canned some of the apple cider in canning jars just for him in case of bacteria. But, we have never had any problem with drinking fresh pressed apple cider or cider frozen for later use. We also use apples we pick for applesauce and apple pie filling. The transparent apple variety makes excellent applesauce and pie filling but isn't the best for cider. Well, there is our routine for making great and healthy apple cider. We hope you will experience it too.